Hi guys, welcome back. England 52, Scotland 10. Now I'm going to be getting into covering the women's Six Nations in respect as to following England's journey through that competition because that's the team I know the best and I'm going to slowly build up my knowledge of the other teams with the main goal of then covering the Women's World Cup coming up. Now this was a really interesting game and off the bat we've got to say that England in one pool and France in the other pool are massive favourites. England, fully professional, France, semi-professional, both with lots of resources, lots of extra players. So it is a little bit unbalanced. I mean, in elite sport, there's never an excuse, but there is a reason. So that is worth bearing in mind. And where women's rugby needs to go in the future, which hopefully is coming very soon, is the likes of Scotland, Wales, Italy, um, Ireland going fully professional, so everyone can compete on the same standing, then it would be a lot closer. That being said, Scotland did a lot good in this game as well. Um, but let's get into it. Starting off two minutes in, England will get their attack going straight away, all the way from halfway up to five metres. And the England forwards were just piling over the gain line. And this was, um, you know, a theme all game when England got their attacking game going. Their big forwards, like Poppy Cleal, like the big second rows, were just piling over the gain line. And Scotland couldn't really stop them at source. They went for crossfield kicks pretty early on. Not sure it was the best move because their forwards were just getting over the gain line so easily. I'm sure they could have just rolled through the phases and got a score, um, and they overkicked a couple of times. So a little bit frustrating there, but a good start. One thing to note, actually, is the Scottish scrum and line-out was excellent all game, especially the line-out. That's where you maybe expect a fully professional team to have the edge, but not at all. So that's very impressive for Scotland and maybe a little worrying for England as well. Seven minutes in. We see Scarrett and Breach get into the game for the first time. Probably their two most dangerous running backs, um, making big games. I mean, Breach is an absolute nightmare to defend against. And we get into this period where Scotland are, are pinned in their own half and their clearing kicks aren't good enough. Now, their 10, you know, is a good player. Nelson's got a big kick on her, but they were kicking from nine as well and they were just lobbing them into midfield and the English back three were just waiting to counter-attack. And indeed, um, the Scottish uh, defence is always going to be more disorganised off a counter-attack. And the first try came from a really quick counter-attack and Packer crashing over 7-0. So good start for England. But Scotland didn't need to be in that position because those clearing kicks uh, could either be kick could to compete, which we didn't see them do a lot, or just clear it off the pitch because their line-out was pretty good. So... Bit of a tactical error from Scotland there, I think, but well taken by England. Now, 10 minutes into the game, Scotland actually started getting into their first attack. Some good shape. You can see they're moving the ball nicely and crisply. But the English defence is just a little bit quicker, swarming over them, getting to that breakdown just that fraction of a second quicker, putting a lot of pressure on the Scots, and they can't really get anywhere. And, and again, on 16 minutes, it's another poor clearance kick from Scotland that just fed England the try, to be honest. Uh, this time, it's Riley going over the scrum half, um, just pinballing over. Good try, 12-0. But again, Scotland could easily be 0-0 at this game at the moment, even though they're under pressure. Those clearing kicks were really putting them under pressure. It takes up to 21 minutes for Scotland to get into their first good set of attacks close to the English line. Um, they get a good line out. Their hooker, Skeldon, was amazing all game. Basically throwing to the back of the line out as their go-to throw, and it was so good. It didn't matter. Comment below if you've watched her a lot. I was incredibly impressed. Just absolute bullets to the back of the line out. Uh, they're 10 metres out, they get a penalty. Now, here's the thing, they take the three points, which is fine. They don't, you know, don't want to be nilled or anything like that. But if they want to compete and beat teams like England, I think that was a position to actually go for a try, maybe kick to the corner again, because like I said, their set piece was good. But anyway, they take the points, 12-3. And Scotland, you know, they're playing a lot of rugby. They've clearly got a lot of ability, but they were playing a lot of rugby in their own half. And they had the win behind them. I really think if they got their kicking game together a little bit more, they might have had a bit more joy. So that was another note to be made there. <clears throat> On 28 minutes, 
Really good Scottish scrum, but again, the English defence is just swarming over Scotland. Um, Lark Davis really sharp over the ball with a turnover. She was impressive all game, actually. Then they go to a, a line-out. It was a big maul. Get the try that Davis deserved because she kind of created it. So 19-3. Good defence creating the opportunity for England there. Then uh, Nelson of Scotland gives a big hospital pass to one of her outside backs. Poppy Cleal just lines her up and absolutely ends her, get a penalty. Uh, but England actually squander that one through some poor handling. And that is one work on that England will absolutely want to improve in the future. They did drop a lot of ball in good position. But like I said, some big hits going in from England. And Poppy Cleal, a name that keeps popping up and up, uh, absolutely destroyed um, people in the tackle and in the carry. So impressive. Anyway, half an hour in and the England defence is putting so much pressure on. They're winning the penalties, but they're not uh, converting. And Scotland actually go to a five metre line out because of England's errors. Another great throw, but Scotland this time lose the ball in a great position. So again, from that penalty earlier on, on 20 minutes and that position there, they could have got some more points. And if they hadn't cleared so poorly at the beginning, they could even be up in this game, to be honest. So those are the ways that Scotland need to you know, need to analyse this game, really. Then there's a good rip turnover from England, good interplay. And again, when the Scottish defence is disorganised, England really made hay. This time it's Bryony Cleal smashing over. The bonus point is there on 35 minutes. So again, that turnover, either from a kick or a rip or anything or a mistake, England are just punishing Scotland. Um, and again, poor ball security. I think it's from Rowley this time in the carry, carrying the ball very loosely. Again, gifts England, England another counter-attack chance. Fair play, they convert it. But it's still, you know, still a hard try to score in the end. Breach gets the ball, one-on-one -on -one with her opposite number. Footwork handoff, gas inside, individual brilliance. That's the problem if you give England this counter-attack um, stuff. So really, it's 33-3 to three at half-time. Could have been a bit different, but England very ruthless on the counter-attack. And like I said... The professional versus amateur is showing very much in the physicality. The English forwards especially, so much bigger and more powerful. Big dominant tackles, bigger carries. It's something that if Scotland went fully professional, they would narrow the gap, I'm sure. Um, Scottish set piece was excellent, but the English defence was certainly swarming on Scotland, stopping them playing. And the turnover tries was really the difference at half-time. Into the second half, and England pick up where they left off. Poppy Cleal again, hitting up a huge line um, off the scrum half. Sets up quick ball. And I'll tell you what was so good about that line from Poppy Cleal. Is she, she ran a hard line, but the ball wasn't quite as quick as she thought. So she literally just swerved in field slightly, then straightened again to make sure she didn't overrun the ball. That is, you know, that's the sort of thing professional does. That shows you the absolute class that she has. And they create a a spaceful breach again out wide she causes the damage and it's Roland that picks up the gaps goes over with her pace 40 points to three and Roland at 10 for England really looks like she's got all the ability to be a great 10 for England obviously the fight's there to be 10 over uh, Daly McLean who's retired Roland's very quick she's physical got a big kick didn't execute everything as she would have liked in this game, but I definitely like what I saw there in her ability. So 40 points to three, looking bad for Scotland. However, they go into their best spell of the game on 48 minutes. Much more line speed from Scotland in attack and defence, forcing errors. And that gets them to a five metre line out. Another great long throw, just ridiculously great at throwing the Scottish hooker. Five metres out, lots of pressure phases, good patience, but they're using the width as well, so really like the variation. Penalty after penalty, Poppy Cleal, who's been so good, goes off with a yellow. Scrum five metres out, brilliant short line from Smith. She was very good for Scotland all game. Another penalty. Then another scrum, the pressure's just piling and piling up, more phases, more penalties, and eventually Smith goes over for the try. Really good work. Like I said, she looked impressive. 40 points to 10, well deserved. Um, that is, you know, that's what you get from pressure in defence and then patience in attack, not making mistakes. So that's a good template for Scotland going forward. Then things start going wrong for England a bit. It's a yellow for Lark Davis, which is a high tackle 
which is a problem that the men are having in the Six Nations and is in general. To be honest, if you stand up in the tackle, you could be in trouble. I've talked about it a lot already. It wasn't too bad from Lark Davis, but still, it was a high shot. Possibly a little fortunate to get yellow, although you know, the player was dipping in the tackle. And at this point, England are at 13 players. Skeldon still throwing absolute darts in the line out. Um, the attack's going really well for Scotland. So much more energy. Uh, it's just a shame they waited a half to get it going, to be honest. Lots of indiscipline from England now. They're getting frustrated. and But just as Scotland are starting to get a foothold in this game, they get a card, but this time it's a red card. And it's a nasty swinging arm, to be fair, into the head from right. Not good at all. She goes off. Uh, again, standing up in the tackle, the big problem there. Um, coaches need to coach lower tackles because otherwise you're just going to get yellows and reds every game. England, you know, they're a bit slow, but their heavy carriers now are rumbling over the gain line about five minutes later as they start to get back up to full strength. Nothing flash, just getting the big, uh, big players over the gain line. Five meter scrum, but another error. Smith rips the ball, actually done well there. So just errors, um, just as England are getting in good positions, is what's going to frustrate them after this game. But they get to five metre out, line out eventually. They get into their maul, just a bit too big, just a bit too strong. Poppy Cleal smashes over for a try, 45-10. Uh, Roland puts a lovely long kick along the ground, right into the corner, putting the Scots under pressure. But of course, Scottish line out, excellent, not a problem. But then they make an error. Forward pass gifts England another um, another try. Um, although it looks like a try, Poppy Cleal goes over, but she does knock on at the base of the scrum. But then England still in good territorial dominance. Big carries again. Cleal again, of course. Um, England do muff up an easy handling run in on the um, left edge, but they get one more scrum. Big scrum, penalty, penalty try, 52 10. So, in the end, big win for England, although a messy second half. The counter-attack for them really killed Scotland at the beginning. Scotland, plenty of positives there. I've highlighted in that game where they went wrong, though, and they could definitely tidy up some of those things. But like I said, until they go fully professional, we won't quite know how good they are. Um, Poppy Cleal, player of the match by far. Smith. Very good for Scotland on the other side, as was the hooker as well. So let me know what you thought of the game and the players. And with France winning very handily by 50 points in their pool, it really does look like the two favourites, England and France, are going to be careering towards that final showdown later on. Anyway, guys, really enjoyed watching that match. Comments below what you thought, and I'll catch you next time.